even in the worst of times, there is a message that's beautiful if you are open to receiving it from that incident. And it can completely change the trajectory of your life. Welcome to season two of the Delicious Alignment podcast. Today is part two of my interview with Kimberly Riggins, founder of the brand new podcast, Love Your Naked Ass. In part one, Kimberly shares her journey of how she was sexually assaulted in high school at the age of 16 and the onset of anorexia, which followed as she literally tried to disappear. She takes us through her path to wellness, including the powerful mindfulness and self-care principles she now teaches in her coaching practice, such as the negative voice inside your head gets 10 times louder when you're not doing a lot of self-care and you are a better version of yourself when you give yourself enough love. If you haven't listened to part one yet, health and wellness after anorexia, I highly recommend doing so even if you've never had anorexia or an eating disorder of any kind. There's a lot there for everyone. In today's episode, part two, Kimberly and I talk about worthiness, how we were all born worthy, the connection between our relationship with food and our relationship with others, the benefits of being 100% responsible for your own happiness, how a breast cancer diagnosis led her to an even deeper place of self-love and appreciation of her body, and the healing power of humor. Before we dive into the interview, I have a few quick announcements. The first is that I want to make sure you know that we are moving to a weekly format, which means we will launch a new podcast episode every Thursday. In addition, I will be doing 30-minute Tuesday tune-ups on Instagram to help you raise your vibes live. Follow me on Instagram at Delicious Alignment to participate. I would love to have you there. This past Tuesday, I took a small group through a tuning exercise, which raises your vibration. It's very powerful. I also want to let you know about my program, Easy Peasy Eating 2, starting the end of January. It is about body love and food freedom. Stay tuned for more details. If you are interested in private coaching on any topic, please go to my website, deliciousalignment.com slash coaching. I currently have three spots open. Great. Now let's get started with today's interview. Like I was saying, I think that part of my healing process was the ability to talk about my story and and not be afraid to share it. I look at my, all of the things that have happened to me, and that's just the one piece that comes from the eating disorder and the body image issues. I mean, I have multiple stories that kind of are spread throughout my life that definitely have the undertones and the emotions. And I've had to face a lot of different things and challenges, but people will say to me, would you, if you could go back, would, what would you change? Obviously you wouldn't have that happen to you. And I was like, okay, well, yes, Mm. but no, at this point, no. Because I don't think I'd be talking to you today if I wouldn't have gone through that experience. I certainly wouldn't be in the career that I'm in. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be launching a podcast in two weeks. Like none of these things would have happened. And I really believe that. I think that everything happens for a reason. And I believe that even in the worst of times, there is a message that's beautiful if you are open to receiving it from that incident. And it can completely change the trajectory of your life. It made you who you are. It's part of your personality in a way. So it's a tricky question. I understand totally. Yeah, very tricky question. I mean, the piece of my story that I didn't share was aside from the whole macro incident in 2016, I had breast cancer and I definitely saw, I saw the body image thoughts coming back. So the reason being is because, you know, here you are, you, you have cancer, you went through, like I went through a double mastectomy and I looked at myself for the first time in the mirror and I had to really embrace that mirror mantra even more so than ever from that piece, because I had a Frankenstein scar from chest to chest. I mean, straight across, lost my nipples, lost every piece of my butt, my tissue. And I was like, Oh, I have to, I have to find a way to come to terms with this without it negatively affecting me. It was a process. It was absolutely Mm -hmm. a process. So I feel like one of the things that needs to be said is that whatever you're going through, it doesn't mean that 
it's going to come back full fledged. It doesn't mean it will come back ever again, but you will find yourself in some situations and in some instances in your life that will bring back some old crap, right? Some Mm -hmm. old thought processes Mm -hmm. and you get to see what you're made of. Yeah. You get to test what you're made of. And what was my saving grace was I built that toolbox, right? With the tools that worked for me. And I can honestly say that if I didn't have them, I don't know if I'd be in the same spot because it was, it was really hard on me to look at myself for quite a few months even. And then I just, and it affected me intimately. And I had worked through all of that as well. I mean, that could be an entirely different episode. Just the intimacy issues you have after being raped is just mind boggling and how that affects your marriage, affects your relationships. And now I had this Frankenstein scar across my chest and I was like, oh, but he's never going to want to look at me again. Right. And of course, men don't see what women see. I have I know this intellectually. I mean, my husband has told me this. I've heard it from other men and it's still something you have to work through. And mm-hmm. now we laugh, like I laugh about it now, you know. I start, again, I use humor a lot to help myself mm-hmm. heal. Yeah, so that's good. There that's was healthy. a point where yeah. I was like, who needs a Halloween costume? I'll just be Frankenstein, right? <laughs> and my husband would laugh. But I often use humor to help offset the thoughts. And then it would take me into a better headspace, then I could continue to work on those triggers. So humor and changing your thoughts have been a huge tool for yeah. me. In anything in it, anything and everything I've done in life, those are the things that I've used. Yeah. Recognizing that your thoughts can be changed. You can literally rewrite the story and humor always makes it more fun. It's I find it just amazing. It's I, I have even more respect and for you for how you handle that and how do you get past that and start to you have to give yourself some grace i mean yeah you really have to give yourself some grace no one asks for cancer no one asks for the scars no one asks for the surgery like you just don't you just don't plan on any of that to happen so i think the first thing that i had to remember was i'm alive honestly i'm alive and i did everything that i did to make sure that i didn't have to go through chemotherapy or any type of medication treatment plans because i saw what it did to my father and he's no longer with us i see what it's doing to my mother now and i made the right decision i also did it and i did the other side because i only had breast cancer on one side because i found out i had the BRCA2 gene and i didn't want to go through this again and i didn't want to put my family through it again and i wanted to like be the best mom i could be and one of the things that i pride myself on and one of the things that i've taught my son is that you were born worthy naked (laughs) (laughs) and he's a boy so it's a little different because he's a boy but Mm -hmm. My son has absolutely no problem. He is 100% comfortable in his own skin to Mm -hmm. the point where he still walks around the house naked and has a conversation with me. And I'm like, okay, you're 14. Can we get some clothes on? (laughs) Yeah, but you know, (laughs) I, I, that makes me smile. Yes. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Comfortable, comfortable in his own skin. Yeah. Um, And it's beautiful to see. And I've taught him. I mean, I used to say that to him before he would go to bed. You're worthy because you exist. Period. End of story. That's it. And yeah. here's the funny part. Like I've heard this a hundred times. It's really hard being naked. And and I use that word loosely because I'm, I'm saying being really who you are, showing mm-hmm. up as yourself, not caring mm-hmm. what other people think. But then also in the physical sense, being naked is really hard for people. And it was hard for me. And I have days where I feel bloated and not so good. And I don't want to be naked. I get it. I'm human. We're all humans having Mm -hmm. human experiences. But at the end of the day, I remind myself, I was born worthy naked. I was naked when I was born. We were born naked. God treated us that way. (laughs) We weren't born with clothes on. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Society has flipped our minds to say, like, you need to wear clothes. You need to cover everything. And it's like stigmatized. Now, I'm not saying we should go all walking around naked. I'm not saying that at all. But there are certain things in my life that I've done that are very freeing. Like part of my process with loving my body was we went to a, uh, we went on vacation one year, my husband and I. I don't even know if we were married at the time. Yeah, we were. We were married. It was right before. It was like the honeymoon before we had a child, right? Right. So we went to this island. And the first thing I saw when we walked on the beach was a woman topless. And I was like, I want to do that just so I can experience what it feels like to do that. It's going to be freeing because I was always very self-conscious because I was flat chested and that's a whole different story and whatnot. 
and no clothes used to fit me right <laughs> initially. And it was the funniest. We had a blast and I felt freeing. It was like my next level. It was like the next. So did you do ever. it? Oh, absolutely. I did yeah, it. I right. <laughs> 100% did it and it was freeing. And it was, um, I realized like that was just another step for me in this process. This was another step for me to loving all of myself naked. Mm-hmm. And even I did boudoir photos. I mean, any woman who wants to feel empowered and see herself in a different light, I'm a huge advocate of it because you have a stranger, because unless you know someone who does this professionally, you have a stranger looking at you through a lens of a camera and you have barely any clothes on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the after effect that you see is just unbelievable. I mean, I felt like a superwoman. Yeah. Yeah. Everything about it was like the experience was phenomenal for me. Again, another step in the right direction. Yeah. For me. Yeah. When I had breast cancer and that happened to me and I had that scar a couple years ago, we were standing at the pool, my husband and I, and I would ne- like, I made sure that all my bathing suits covered the scars and even even being intimate with my husband for a while, I wouldn't even take off a tank top because I was so self-conscious with this giant scar because it was red and it didn't heal well. I'm very light. Like I'm, I don't tend to like heal quickly skin wise because I'm so pale. So I just like red, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. draw it across mm-hmm. my chest. And I found myself one, one day realizing that I didn't care anymore. And I was like, let's go skinny dipping. And I whipped off my shirt and he looked at me and was like, you don't have a shirt on. I'm like, and I like made this sound and like jumped up. And I'm like, who's going to get in the water first? And, and I realized like that was another stepping stone for me. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's another comfort stepping stone for me. Yes. I don't, I don't hide. And yeah. I just, I think I want people to understand that it's a process and that you have to continue to work at it. For me, loving my body is constantly taking that next step, that next challenge, that next whatever it is that I set it up for myself to be like, can I do this? Will I make my, can I be in this position and feel good in my own skin? And, yes. Yeah. And for someone else, it just might be simply going to the beach, you know, yeah, with like lots of clothes bathing. on or, mm-hmm. or with a yes. full bathing suit with a skirt, you know, down to your ankles and a sweater. Yeah. I mean, whatever it is for you taking that step, like actually putting your feet in the water you know, or looking in the mirror in your own eyes. It, it's really what it is for you. Yeah. Yeah. When I share my story to clients and whatnot, I always say that it's like, listen, yeah. I'm not expecting you to be me. This is my version. Right. I'm telling you this because it's possible but we are going to start where you want to start. So if that means you're in sweatpants and socks up to your knees and we get you down to a t-shirt where you see some skin on your arms, we won. Yeah. That makes you feel good. Yeah. But I constantly am kind of lovingly pushing that envelope to say, can we go deeper, right? Mm -hmm. Can you, Mm -hmm. can you love yourself a little bit more? Can you take something away? Can you stop hiding? Right. Yeah. And I've seen, I've seen some women do some amazing things, get a boyfriend, get a new job, finally, you know, tell their parents that she was in love with a woman. Like these clients that I've worked with, like were able to really step outside of their comfort zone because of the work we did. And it showed up in different variations of their life, which is the most beautiful thing. I don't really want to talk about your body every single day. I want to see you shine in the world. That's my real goal. But we need to dig into those layers first to get you there because yeah. that's not you back. Well, well, do you find that when you're starting out, people might work with you for because they want to love their body or they want to lose weight or they want to whatever, they have a better relationship with food. But you wind up talking about oh, we many, talk about many, many other topics. There's it so- always ends up going in a completely yeah. different direction, right? right? Because the way that I work with things especially with my younger clients, we talk and touch on the food. We touch and talk about the body. And I never not talk about that as they're going through their healing process. But I often find there's one thing that a woman wants or or really needs to work on that she may not be willing to see herself yet. And I kind of go from that angle without her even knowing about it at first. So 
with some of my younger clients, it's their confidence, right? So we start to, I start to challenge their confidence and I try to challenge them to do things to like increase that confidence muscle. You know what happens every single time she gets better with her food, her body, right. energy. you know what I mean? It's yes. like, it's like that exactly. trickle domino effect. Exactly. Or you find women that all of a sudden went and told her boss that she thought he was a jerk and she quit her job and found a new one. Like there's like, not that I'm telling people to do that, but that was her <laughs> version of it. Right. She's like, I'm done. I'm worthy. And, you know, I will, I'll never forget. She called me one day and she's like, this specific client, I'm worthy because I exist. And I walked into my boss's office and I handed in my resignation. And I was like, that is what I want. Like, that's what lights me up. It's not really about is food good or bad for you anymore. It's beyond that. If we have to work from that piece, that's awesome. But I want to see what, what you do with the potential that you have that I see in you after all that's out there right? Because mm -hmm. we are full of potential and possibilities and we all have gifts. If you're yeah. just willing to look inside and see your naked self. <laughs> <laughs> your naked self. And yeah, food freedom translates into all areas of your life. Absolutely. Into freedom in all the different areas of your life. Relationship, money, I mean, very connected to money, very connected to relationship. Yep. I mean, it, it can't not affect all the other areas. Yeah. And if you have one area where you, you know, have a, listen, I'm sure you've heard of the wheel of life. I'm sure you've seen it or used it or, or have heard about it, but you know, you put your life into a wheel and you have all these different sections and ultimately you want the wheel to be a complete circle. That's not reality. Reality is, is that sometimes your circle is going to look like a picture of a pig I don't know or a picture of a squirrel yeah like, like, but like it's, it's not, not never going to be like oh this is my life is so balanced 100% balanced correct it's not so with food and body yeah it's all interconnected I find the biggest thing with body image is relationships with others honestly I feel like that's mm. the biggest piece is like oftentimes you see relationships really and I'm a testament to that because I I know my mm -hmm. body image issues negatively affected my relationship and my marriage because sure. i think it, there's usually shame a lot of shame involved and that is one of the lowest emotions and how could if you're feeling shame how can that not affect your relationships because you're feeling that way about yourself so it's kind of hard to fully allow yourself to feel those feelings for someone else love someone if you don't love yourself that goes back to that old saying if you're not oh. loving yourself it's kind of difficult to love yeah. someone else Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing I learned is if you are in a relationship, it doesn't even matter what kind of relationship it is, but I'm talking specifically about a romantic relationship. You have the ability to listen. I, I don't like the saying it's 50, 50. I think that is the most biggest crock of crap ever. I, and it's my philosophy. I know some people believe it and that's cool. I'm not knocking it, but I think that you need to want to be in at a hundred percent, take a hundred percent, you show up a hundred percent. And the best part about it is, can you do that without having an expectation? That's when you find the, the light. Let me, let me say that it's like, it's an enlightenment when you get to the point where you look at the relationship and you're like, okay, I'm going to work at this relationship a hundred percent, regardless of how the other person feels if we're in a tumultuous kind of space and I'm going to have no expectation because I love this person enough that I'm going to put myself and everything I have behind it. Mm -hmm. That piece alone reminded me how powerful we are innately because you can literally change anything if you show up energetically different mm -hmm. anything yes and i'm a true believer yes. like i feel that viscerally like i've experienced it and if you would have told me that 20 years ago i'd have been like no way but now i'm like wow like that really worked women are more powerful than they give themselves credit we all are and uh, about that to your point about the 100 percent, i look at it also like i'm creating my life i am 100 percent creating my own life so putting 100 percent into the relationship means putting 100 percent into everything i am creating all of it even i know it sounds crazy but from law of attraction point of view even this relationship i'm creating all of it and everything yes. that's happening around me is simply a mirror reflection of the thoughts and the emotions that i'm feeling so i'm responsible for all of it oh so, yeah. yes yes, yeah. yes. And, and it's tough to hear that sometimes like i mean you yeah say, I it, is. Myself, it is i say it to myself like and i say this to my son all the time you know you have to be 100 percent responsible for your 
place in the world. Like blaming people is, even if someone did something bad to you, you need to take personal responsibility because how you showed up in that situation is your responsibility. And it doesn't mean that it makes sense or that you can, well, how did I create that? That's, that's not, it doesn't mean that. Does it matter? You understand, you understand how in the world that I could have created that or how could I've been born into, how could somebody be born into poverty or how could, you know, how could you wind up with, with, um, you know, breast cancer, all that kind of, like, it doesn't mean we understand why these things happen, but just knowing that on some level vibrationally, like our soul level came here to experience these things. Correct. And I think that's what came, like, I was always very, I'm an instigator by nature. Like I constantly question things and I'm always asking, you know, (laughs) I could say, yeah, I love it though. I love it. But the thing about it is, is what you said makes absolute sense. It's like, sometimes it doesn't matter why it happened. You may never get the answer you're looking for. What you need to search for is if you take the personal responsibility that you and I are talking about, what are you going to do with it? Right. Because you're right. We were put on this earth. Like we were brought to this planet, put on this earth, however you believe that you got here. And we're meant to have certain experiences. Mm -hmm. And we get, we create them, you know, we create them. And I believe that it could help you get to your purpose. Like it's part of your journey. Like if you use it, if you use it to help propel you forward, the beautiful gifts and doors open. If you choose to not take a personal responsibility, because that's a choice and you allow it to take over your life and you wallow in it every day, well, your life's going to be quite different. Yeah. And I've been having that thought lately because I've gotten even more into like my work, what I'm doing, delicious alignment and helping women. What happened doors started opening more when I really said, okay, what is it that you want me to do? Whoever you is, inner being, higher self, God, the universe, source, whatever you want to call it. And I said, what is it? What is it? And it was, I clearly got, yes, continue what you're doing. Really, this is it. Like you, I'm living my purpose. And I don't even use those words like living your purpose, but it feels like it. It feels like I'm living my purpose now. It gets easier. Doors are opening. This happens. That happens. This synchronicity, that synchronicity. And so when you really tap in and tune in to what feels good, I call it what feels good to you, what your intuition is guiding you to do, what you're being guided to do. And then, yes, like you just said, things just come a little bit more easily signs come to you and I'm loving it right now. I have to say, I'm really loving it. How clear I am because it wasn't always there, the clarity. And when you get that clarity, just by allowing yourself, like, it's almost like surrendering. Okay, here I am. How can I be the most useful? What do you want me to do? You know, and I, I don't know if you know who I'm talking to. I could be talking, to, I'm definitely not talking to a, a an old man on a throne sitting in heaven, but I'm talking to <laughs> something, you know, yeah. and it's probably myself. I'm talking to myself, well, <laughs> my yeah. inner being who's connected to all. We are all one. I hope you enjoyed part two of my interview with Kimberly Riggins. To connect with Kimberly, go to her website at KimberlyRiggins.com. Find her on Facebook at Kimberly C. Riggins and on Instagram at Kimberly Riggins. Find her podcast, Love Your Naked Ass, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Find all the links mentioned in today's show at deliciousalignment.com slash podcast. And make sure to subscribe. And if inspired, take it one step further and scroll down on your phone and leave a review. This helps me get the word out. These reviews are really helpful. So please take two minutes, if you love this podcast, to say a few words. It really helps. Oh, and if you haven't already, go ahead and join my Facebook group, Delicious Alignment-Abraham Hicks. Talk to you next Thursday.